Welcome to How to Trust Your Intuition, the podcast, the place where we learn that trust is earned and not given, even with ourselves. I'm your host, Betsy Le Fay. I'm a social worker, turned award-winning psychic medium, turned intuition teacher. And my school, Trust Yourself Intuition School, celebrated its 10th anniversary in 2023. Join us each episode as we interview thought leaders and luminaries in every genre. They talk about how and when they learn to trust their intuition. Most say they're still learning. What happens when they do trust it and what happens when they don't. Stick around as we all walk together down the road towards trusting our intuition. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of How to Trust Your Intuition. On today's episode, we have Kelsey Aida. Kelsey Aida is a best-selling author and transformation facilitator who helps women manifest their dream lives and love themselves deeply through the process. She's the author of more than five personal development books, including Actually I Can, Affirmations for Happiness, Letters to the Universe, and Self-Love for the Modern Woman. Alongside her books, she helps people via her international retreats, one-on-one coaching, online courses, and her popular spiritual podcast, High Vibe In It. It's with pleasure that I introduce you to Kelsey Aida. I am an author. I write inspirational books, specifically on the topics of authentic affirmations, happiness, self-love, manifestation, um, and all that jazz. Because for me, I think quality of life is the most important thing. And I'm really an energetic alignment coach, a transformation facilitator, and I help people to line up with their highest timelines, aka manifest their biggest dreams, while also loving themselves deeply through the process. So Mm. what I do with people, there's a lot of healing work involved, energy work involved, emotional thought work. Uh, We work together on many different levels to help people raise their vibration, feel better, enjoy their life more, and get what they want out of it and just live really intentionally. So that's what I'm here for. That's great. That's really, really great. I was perusing your website just a few moments ago, and I saw, I think, a blog post that said, why you don't have to be happy all of the time to manifest your dreams or something like that. Yeah. Um, I would love to know like sort of just a little touch of that to share with the audience. I think that sounds great. Yeah, because I so I wrote that article a while back because I feel like in the law of attraction and manifestation space, there's this like unsaid pressure of like, you have to have positive thoughts all the time in order to manifest a positive life experience. You have to be happy in order to be a vibrational match to happy things. And it's just too much pressure and it's not actually true. What I found to be more true is that a state of non-resistance is one that's going to bring you your best life. So that also means not resisting how you're feeling, even if you're feeling bad, right? And to force yourself to think happy and be positive 24-7 is one, just not realistic. If you're a human, you're going to experience contrast. You're going to have ups and downs. That's a part of the process. So it's just not very self-loving to put that expectation on yourself of like, I should be happy all the time. I should be able to think positive thoughts all the time like no that's just not it right that's not where it's at Mm -hmm. so that's why I wrote that article and I just think it's important for people to know that how it really works is the more open you are to your experience in the now the more open you are to all the blessings it doesn't Mm -hmm. have to be always perfect your thoughts don't have to be perfect your mood doesn't have to be perfect but if you can maintain a space of non-resistance which is what I help a lot of my clients to do like I help them to move through their uncomfortable feelings with ease and grace and help them navigate tough times in their life with ease and grace when you can do that You're just at a way higher vibrational state, whether you're feeling good or not. Mm -hmm. And you're open to all the blessings that are lined up for you versus like forcing yourself to feel good and feel positive and think good thoughts because that's just not possible. Yeah. (laughs) And it's just not the way, you know? I mean, I'm all for positivity. Obviously, I wrote a book called Affirmations for Happiness. I'm always teaching people about how to be more happy and have better thoughts and think better thoughts. But when you can not like forcing yourself all the time. I I just, all of that was music to my ears and I'm not just like 
you know, placating you. I'm just like, that That was such a, I wrote this down, um, how to navigate, you know, difficult emotions, difficult times with ease and grace, regardless of how you feel, if you feel good or if you feel bad. And that's, that's such a good uh, differentiation between you can feel bad and still act with grace. And um, as you're talking, I, I just have to look back at some of my over the past couple of years extraordinarily difficult times and that's that's what i did you know and i wasn't able to uh verbalize it in such a in such a clear way so thank you and um i'm glad you said the word twice at least twice non-resistance and um i'm like oh i'm so glad that word popped up again um and i was wondering um i think like you know, it's addiction. So we don't need to like pick things apart. But would you say sort of like generally a uh, synonym for non-resistance is acceptance? Would you say so? Yeah, I would say mm-hmm. acceptance is one way to practice being in a state of non-resistance for sure. Yeah. What are some other ways? Some other ways would be, well, we can think of like other other verbs since we're on the acceptance, right? To accept something, um, allowing, Mm -hmm. welcoming, Mm -hmm. opening yourself to surrendering, not fighting against. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, acceptance is definitely top of the list for sure. That's great. This is, that's just really helpful. That's amazing. Um, Okay. So then let's talk about intuition, shall we? Yeah. Um, was there a time? Is it ongoing? How did it happen that you learned about your intuition and you learned to trust it or you're learning to trust it? Yeah. So I have a really interesting relationship with my intuition. Um, I think in my childhood, I was pretty like normal, <laughs> meaning like not super spiritual, not really open to my intuition, just, you know, being a kid, doing kid stuff. And um, in my early adulthood, I went through a period of depression, which was like my first spiritual awakening, like my initiation into my gifts was like right on the other side of this period. Around what age, couple, you said? Um, I think at this time I was like, this was a period from like 17 to like 20. Okay. So I was pretty young. And then again, a couple years later, I had a spontaneous Kundalini awakening. And mm-hmm. then I opened up to some psychic gifts, some mediumship gifts, stuff that I had, had no idea was like laying mm-hmm. dormant within. So in my adulthood, I've really been playing around with like the benefits of my intuition, not just for myself, but for other people. Like in my client work, I use it a lot to gain clarity or insight Mm -hmm. or revelations for people when maybe they can't access their own in that moment. You know, we all need a little help sometimes getting some clarity or some insights or messages, whatever it is. But lately I feel that I'm really aligned with my intuition because I'm just really following what I feel feels good to me in like a long-term way. So I'm always asking myself before I start something like, is this going to feel good to me? Not just in this moment when I do it, but a month from now, a year from now, a couple years from now, like, is this going to sustainably feel good for me and keep lighting me up? Like, I don't always know, but if Mm -hmm. I have it like a 90% yes, I'll usually go with it and see how it goes. (laughs) Yeah. That's, um, that's a, a tool that is in alignment with my free will horoscope this week. So a lot of people know free will horoscope. A lot of people don't. It's syndicated around the U.S. It's um, I I love it because it is free will, right? So it's not like this is going to happen to you. It's like, oh, think about, you know, think about if this is a full yes for you in 10 years. And that's that's really, really beautiful. Um, the other day, I'm, people have different versions of this. Like I don't have a touch screen on this computer. Right. So sometimes people like try to like touch their yeah. computer screen. <laughs> the other day I was moving some furniture just a, a bit and I moved it like an inch. And then I just like wanted, I like had this impulse to press undo just so that it would ship. like, literally like, that's what I thought. So while you were talking, like when it happened, when you were talking, I like really wanted to like pinch in and zoom in on this part of your story. My fingers kept like trying to pinch. I was like, no. (laughs) I love that. Be present. So, okay. So 
for people who don't know uh, what a Kundalini awakening is, I think we can say roughly it is a an energetic awakening of the source within you. Um, I my my zoom in specifically is after that happened before you met the helpers, right? Before you met anyone. Uh, or, so how how did you find the helpers? Right. I imagine it must have been disorienting or confusing or elating. Yeah. So <sighs> you're all ready for your vacation. It's really hectic getting here, but you're seated in your airplane seat, looking out the window and you hear the pilot come on the intercom. Good day, everyone. It's a beautiful day outside, 71 and sunny. As you're aware, to get to where we're going, we need to fly over that mountain range. And sometimes there can be a little bit of turbulence. I'm about 80% sure we'll get there safely. So buckle up, relax, and enjoy your flight. <laughs> I know that sounds like an absurd situation. But when I put this in context of trusting yourself and trusting your intuition, and I ask people on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most, how much do you trust yourself? 8 is a very high score when asking people. So if you fall on a two to four range, you're totally not alone. Now picture this other scenario. You're out to lunch with a friend and the friend says that they've been having a really difficult time learning French. You ask the logical question, are you taking a class? And their answer is, well, I'm taking Spanish. Guess what? If you want to trust yourself deeply, if you want to have an easier time making decisions, break through blocks, connect with people, know who to connect with, when, there's a class for that. I've actually helped thousands of people truly trust themselves in uncertainty, in times of doubt or fear, shame or guilt. And I have a free masterclass called Intuition 101, How to Trust Yourself in Uncertain Times, that will tell you everything you need to know in order to learn to trust yourself. The link is in the show notes. However, you can also go to howtotrustyourintuition.com, all spelled out. Well, all like throughout my life and the struggles, I feel like the helpers were already there even before it had happened. So uh -huh. the universe had set me up good, okay? Set me up to eventually succeed. It was funny because I went to cosmetology school to be a cosmetologist, which I still am only one day a week because I do all this other healing work now and that's my main focus. But when I first started doing hair, I ended up assisting at the salon in San Diego where I lived called Fabrica Monet. And the owner of the salon was the most psychic person I have ever met my whole entire life. And eventually it turned out that he was a shaman. He got like initiated into shamanhood. And um, so he was with me through my whole journey. So when I would slip or I would fall or I would have like questions, I would yeah. usually go to him. And it was funny because he was my hair mentor. He taught me how to cut hair and he was really good at it. And he was also like one of my spiritual mentors. So really, I feel like in a way people were there. And then if I needed them, I could ask other people who are already in my life, Hey, do you have someone who's a good resource for this or this or this? And at one point I was seeing a really good therapist who was a friend of my mom's at another time. Mm -hmm. um, she had recommended me to a really great chiropractor who was helping me with some holistic stuff. And so in each phase, I feel like there were some moments where I had to do a little bit of digging, but always they were like already there. I love that. I really, really, really love that. But for people who are like, oh, cool. Good for you, Kelsey. Like, where am I supposed to find my help, right? You can ask your life. Yeah. You can ask the people in your life. You can ask your archangels. You can ask the universe, like, send help, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it yeah. will get sent. So mm -hmm. don't be afraid to ask. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're totally, totally right. I had this one experience, and this was way early in my intuitive development. Um, and... It was actually with a classmate of mine. So I, I took, you know, classes and this classmate of mine, he was actually a banker. And um, like I said, he was in school with me, but he like did full on channeling, which to this day, like, I don't really believe I've had a channeled reading and I was skeptical, you know, but I knew what it was. Um, 
I'll say that I'll say in the beginning real quick. And that was that like, um, while like the transition was happening, like my, my classmate was leaving his body and his guide was who was coming in to, to fully channel. I, I wasn't aware of what you're supposed to do at those moments, you know, and the music that I had on was like a little too loud and I wanted to get up and, and turn it down, but I was like, I don't want to disturb it. And then the first thing that happened, he was like, Oh, welcome. It's good to see you. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, you can go turn the music down if you want. <laughs> like, Bam! like okay okay i'm not questioning anymore <laughs> right right um but what i was what brought this up for me is um just that uh, now i just like completely forgot because it's so funny what were you just saying i very rarely lose my train of thought um, oh i was talking about how you can oh, no, i know what it was yeah so at so towards the end of the reading he's like do you want to hear from your guide i'm like um hell yeah like Obviously. who would say no to that right <laughs> So my guide comes in and, you know, getting information or speaking to or whatever, uh, hearing from these higher consciousnesses, it's not, it's not the same thing as like, um, will I ever get married or not? Right. It's not, you know, it's not like yes or no questions. It's bigger things, but I'd already come with like questions. And so um, I just asked, this was a long time ago, but I was really busy. I had a full-time job. I had my psychic medium job and I had a TV show that I was doing everything for. And so I asked my guy, like, should I still have this TV show? And he literally just like laughed maniacally. And he was like, he was like, I don't know anything about technology, but have you noticed that every time you need help, you get it? And there was this one time, this was like, when was this? Early, early 2000s. I was setting up a website for the first time. It was 2.30 in the morning on a weekday and my website broke. And I went onto Facebook and I was like, help, someone help me. And within five minutes, a friend like was on and fixed my website. And he's like, he's like, who do you think? You know, and he, and he also was like, who do you know that has their own TV show? You know, so just to prove your point about like, ask your guides, like, yeah, they really do help you with those things. Yeah. And your story reminded me of a funny story that has to do with trusting your intuition. If yeah. you want me to share, I'll share it briefly. Please. But one of my first mediumship experiences, I was sitting on the back porch at my friend's house and I was staying at her for staying with her for and her husband and her family for a few weeks, which was like pretty common for me because I was just a single bachelorette. They were like my my family away from home and I'd moved far from my family. So I'd spent a lot of time with them. And I was with them. I was just meditating on the back porch, minding my own business. And then all of a sudden, my friend Jackie, her dad comes through. And he's like, I need you to tell Jackie all this stuff for me, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, not leaving me alone until I go in and do it. So I'm like, okay, Jackie, I'm pretty sure I'm connected with your dad. Like, I don't really do this. Like, this does not really happen that much to me. So I'm going to ask him to like prove that it's him by asking for like a, like a visual because I'm a very visual like psychic. Mm -hmm. So he showed me a red bandana in my third eye. I'm like, well, I don't know what that means because I didn't know this guy. So I'm like, Jackie, what does a red bandana mean? And she turns white as a ghost. Ooh. And she's like, he used to wear bandanas like every single day. That's like his thing. That's his signature. And I was like, oh, okay. So maybe I'm not making this up. Because my point is like, sometimes when you get downloads and information, mm -hmm. it comes through, it feels like it lights up the same area of the brain that like your imagination lives. Absolutely. So you can feel like you're conjuring it when really you're receiving it, right? Mm -hmm. So important lesson. Yeah. So I was telling her that, so that was like confirmed. And then I told her everything that he was telling me to say, which was that he always watches over their little boy at night. And then like a year later, we caught this like ghost figure on the baby cam. So this wow. is like proven in a picture. <laughs> wow. Then he said, um, he was like telling them to stop fighting about stupid stuff, which they totally were. And he said that he was doing everything on the other side to make sure that their next baby was a girl. And then she was, and like all this other stuff that has since like come true. Yeah. So how, like, who am I to yeah. doubt that? Right. Yeah. Even if I'm skeptical of my own gift, like mm -hmm. you can't just make these things up. So I just really want to share that story because it's a funny, it's a funny one. That it's a beautiful story. It really, <laughs> really is. And I just encourage people, even if, um, even if they're a little scared, skeptical or nervous, or 
even if they've never had an experience like this, but they think they're like friends and family would think it's like to be too woo or something. Almost everybody has had an experience like this or knows somebody who does, especially if like past a certain age. I just find it fascinating to get those stories. I, I love them all. Um, your point, your, your story also brought up a few points and that's like, I mentioned before we started taping today that, you know, my school Trust Yourself turned 10 this year. And uh, it's part, we don't, we don't teach mediumship in that class, um, but what you experience of like red bandana, I don't know what that means. Do, do I trust it? Do I not? You're in a safe space with your friend, you know, close friend, relative almost. Um, and so the, the question is, how do you learn to trust that, right? So that's why we we have all these practices and stuff like that in, in the um, school. So yeah, really beautiful story. Do you have a time where uh, you maybe your intuition told you to do something and you didn't trust it and you did the opposite? When I graduated with a BA in psychology in 2002, attachment work was only applied to children. Now in 2023, it seems to be all the rage for a reason because knowing your attachment type, there are three main types, avoidant, anxious, and secure, really changes your life. And if you listen to the podcast where I talked about how I lost $100,000 from a spiritual, quote unquote, spiritual coach, the silver lining to that experience was me discovering the root of a lot of my issues. I was anxiously attached. I had anxious attachment. At the very end of that terrible, terrible situation, yes, it was traumatic, I came across Maya Diamond's work and it was working through her program that literally rewired my brain from anxious to secure. This is how I made it through all of my major transitions over the past two years and discovered so much about myself. Now, if you don't know about attachment work, don't, don't feel bad. Here's a typical situation, in fact, the most common situation that happens with these attachment styles. Person A and person B are in a relationship. They care about one another. Person A reaches out to person B, doesn't hear back right away. So then maybe sends another text or another gesture, which further pushes person B away. Both people get resentful and eventually... They might break up. I was in that situation more often than I'd like to remember. I married the wrong person. I had toxic family relationships and had no idea until I took Maya's program. So the link for a free consultation is in the show notes. And I'm so happy to offer you all the podcast listeners. If you sign up for her program, you will get a free session worth $500 with Maya Diamond herself, one-on-one. -on -one. That's just for How to Trust Your Intuition podcast listeners. You know, this is an interesting question that I've been reflecting on because mm -hmm. I feel like I usually do listen to my intuition, but the kicker is sometimes I feel like your higher self has like a different agenda than your human self. So you trust the intuition thinking one thing, but really it's like your intuition tricked you into the best thing for you at that moment, even if it's not exactly what you wanted. So for example, <laughs> I followed that very clearly. I think Colin, with the example, Colin, it'll become clear for anyone about. who's not clear. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so for example, there was this guy, one of my twin flames, who I dated for a while. And it was very crazy roller coaster. Would not really recommend that experience if you could avoid it. But right. <laughs> the first day I met him in my intuition, in my whole body, I knew that this person was going to be extremely important in my evolution. Mm. But how I interpreted this full body light up in my mind right. was, this is my person. I met my person. Right. Oh my God, it's my future husband, you know? <laughs> So mm -hmm. classic mix up, like my intuition was pinging, but I was misreading. And yep. of course I had to enter the relationship, go through all the lessons, the trials, the tribulations, the abandonment, the heartbreak, the blah, blah, blah. 
And it was all for the best. It really did sculpt me into this self-love teacher you were, because yeah. your twin flame teaches you unconditional love, blah, blah, blah. But it was funny because my intuition was like, do it. But I didn't know, right? Mm-hmm, I didn't mm-hmm. know how it was going to transpire. Mm-hmm. So that doesn't exactly answer your question, but it's similar similar vibe. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But I think sometimes where... I'm still learning in current time to trust my intuition is just when I get information that doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know? And I think we can all relate to like getting information. It doesn't make sense. You're like, should I act on this? Should I talk about this? Is this even relevant? I don't get it. And just questioning too much instead yeah. of, you know, working with it and going. Mm-hmm. With mm-hmm. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, thanks for sharing. Um, do you have a time, big or little, doesn't matter, um, big impact, little impact, doesn't matter, um, when your intuition was, you know, against logic, as you said, and you did, you did follow it. And what happened? Yeah. So recently, actually, my intuition was really pinging me to do less hair. And at the time when it was telling me to do less hair, I was making a lot more money at hair than I was at doing this other work. Mm-hmm. So And of course, like everyone around me is like, oh, you have the best gig ever. You make like $1,400 a day, like playing with people's hair. Like, that's so cool. You know, like, that's awesome. You should just do more of that. It's amazing. And I'm like, yeah, it is awesome and amazing. But also like I'm feeling this heart pull to like this other work that maybe is not going to be as lucrative in the beginning or it's going to be more foreign because I haven't been doing it as long or whatever it is. And so it was a battle of like the intuition in the mind, the intuition in the mind. Mm -hmm. And eventually I was just like, okay, I don't know how this is going to play out. I'm just going to fall back on the safety of like, if this doesn't work, I can always go back to my old life of what I was doing. Yep. But for now, I really do need to do less hair. So I courageously cut back. I disappointed a lot of clients. (laughs) I only do one day now. And it's worked out really good for my mental health, for my physical health, for my emotional health. And now I have more energy and space to write these books that are going to change millions of people's lives. And I just created a new course. And so it really was the right thing to do, but it was so scary and so illogical. Right, right. I was just going to talk about your books. Um, uh, uh, Courageously Cut Back feels like maybe your next book or something like that, right? <laughs> Make yeah. room. I mean, honestly, like I'm it's it's ridiculous to distill any anything's problems to one thing. But I feel like um, especially with women, um, particularly, we don't feel like we we have the privilege or bandwidth to cut back but uh i i do believe when we turn up that courage knob um i honestly feel like either nobody has the privilege or everybody does right um and i've done it so uh i'll just speak for me it sounds like you've had your own thing but um yeah what about your um your latest book your latest course can you tell us about those yeah yeah so the latest book well really it was two books that got released kind of at the same time are both around the theme of manifesting and for Mm -hmm. me I'm a big journaler like anytime I'm like okay this is the next experience I want to call in I get straight to my journal so I created a scripting journal that has Mm -hmm. um, some really thoughtful profound questions to get you like aligned to get you really clear and then you write a letter to the universe and you just Mm -hmm. script it into existence like hey universe this is what I'm calling in super excited to experience this thanks in advance yada yada get really specific detailed however it feels juicy and expensive for you and then it has perforated pages so you can like tear it out get witty with it whatever you want to do um and that one's called letters to the universe so that's a fun one and then at the same time around the same time um another book that i wrote that's more for like newbie manifestors and like baby witches to get into Mm -hmm. manifestation magic is called my pocket guide to manifestation and it's a cute Mm -hmm. pink little book that has a different chapter for each area of life and how to manifest that love or those finances or that purpose or that happiness I tried to cover like the basics of what most of us really want to experience in this life and just create some practices around that so that's a fun really practical guide. I feel like that could be like a really good gift for somebody, you know? What yeah. I, mean? I can just see like people going to brunch and being like, you know, want to know about manifesting, like try this little thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's a good intro. Yeah. Or even if you're like intermediate, it's still fun. You might learn some new practices in there. Um, 
and really the intros of both books are, there's some good tidbits in there even if yes. you're like an advanced manifester because i'm always channeling the good stuff and i read it and i'm like oh that's so good you that's know right. yeah <laughs> but um I'm working on a book right now that's all about resistance and releasing mm -hmm. resistance, working with your resistance, because that's where the manifestation money is at, because we've already gone over the intention setting work and how to call it in. But yeah. it's really like the alignment piece where we get stuck mm -hmm. and the blockages and the little hurdles that we can't jump over. And so each chapter is like a way that you might be carrying resistance and how to untangle that or work through mm -hmm. it or let it go so that your energy can flow more concisely in the direction of what you're wanting. And so you're more open to what you're wanting. So that one's called why the law of attraction works for some people, but not you. And it's oh, basically I love that. <laughs> like a sassy manifestation troubleshooting guide that cool. has been in the works and should be releasing on its own timeline, hopefully in the next year. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, as someone who teaches intuition because it is a skill, it is a language and it's mysterious and you get all wrong information from the 12 different blogs that are coming into your inbox, right? Yeah. Um, it's confusing and overwhelming, full of shoulds, as you even started off talking about, not so great. Um, it's everything you're saying about, you know, what you're offering to help people manifest makes sense. It really, really does. So um, where can people find those things? What's the best way to reach you? Yeah, people can find all that stuff at KelseyAida.com. And um, oh, the course you asked about, it's a money manifesting course. Oh, because great. I've been feeling like in the collective, like people are like, I want more money. I want more freedom. I want more time, you know, and it's all connected. So I created a course called Money Magnetics. And um, if you guys are into guided meditations, I created a free guided meditation. All that right. is awesome and has been working wonders for people. And that's at my website too. If you just go to kelseyaida.com slash MM for money magnetics freebie right. ends with IE, you will get the meditation. You can download it straight to your phone or computer or whatever. Mm. Um, and then there is a little offering after you download the meditation for a mini course that will kind of guide you through some resistance releasing, some a little bit of work that you can do in your journal um, to get the money manifesting really popping off. So that's a new project that I've been working on too. That's been really, really fun. That's fun. That's exactly yeah. what I was going to say. That sounds a lot of fun. Well, you are a lot of fun. I really appreciate you taking the time to come on the show today. Um, thank you so much. This has been wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for giving me a, a platform to spread the medicine and share the good vibes. Yay. How to Trust Your Intuition, the podcast, is written, produced, and created by me, your host, Betsy LeFay. Music provided by Ben Talmy. If you don't want to be like that pilot that is 80% sure you'll get to your next destination safely, and you want to take the right class to learn the right language, and guess what? Intuition is a language. Head over to howtotrustyourintuition.com. I hope this podcast has been helpful to you. If it has, please forward it to a friend who you think it could also make a difference for. There's something that you can do for me and everyone else who listens to this podcast as well. If you hit subscribe, you'll never miss another episode. It'll also help the show get to other people. And of course, I know you've heard other podcast hosts say this before, but it's totally true. If you leave us a five-star rating and a review, it helps other people like you discover this podcast. We all need to learn to trust our intuition. So hit subscribe, give us a five-star review, and write a little blurb while you're there. Your intuition will thank you.